Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. On this year's strategy game, and I'm quite excited because we are going to start a new series today. We are going to play Carrier Battles. Now, I have played this game on the channel before, but there's just been a new DLC for the game, uh, which does allow you to control seaplanes in a lot more detail. So that's quite interesting because they did play a large role um, in the carrier battles in the Pacific in World War II. And uh, the game developer was nice enough to send me a copy of that. Um, so yeah, I'm quite intrigued to find that out. No payment here, just I did get a free access to the game uh, or the DLC. So let's see whether it's worth it. Right, so the scenario I want to play today is actually the Coral Sea. Now, one of the reasons for that is I really, really like the Battle of the Coral Sea. It's one of the most intriguing battles in World War II in the Pacific. Of course, it's often overshadowed by Midway because Midway was ultimately uh, the more deciding turning point of the war. But the Coral Sea already laid the groundwork for what would happen at Midway in a lot of ways. So it's kind of interesting to see it from from that perspective and we're going to talk a little bit about the battle as we play but the other reason why I think this is quite interesting here is because it very strongly centered around seaplanes and seaplane bases uh, that the Japanese were trying to establish while they were um, advancing towards Papua New Guinea so I think the Battle of the Coral Sea is going to be an excellent um, scenario to show off here we're going to play Japan but before we go into that let's talk about the options here a little bit as you can see, we can basically play with the historical option, so that means no Kitabutai, it's just going to be two carriers on the Japanese side, uh, or and, no, uh, and the Doolittle rate, of course, which does mean that it's only going to be two carriers from the US side as well. But we can also ask for the full Kitabutai, so all six of the Japanese fleet carriers that were available at the time, um, or we could go for, let's say, the Doodle Raid, which means the Americans would not have two carriers, but four. We could also think about additional air reinforcements uh, from the Royal Australian Air Force. But what we're going to do here is actually we are going to pick options secretly and randomly. So that is, we do not know how many American carriers are going to be there. It could be two, or it could be four. Um, and I think that's kind of interesting because a lot of um, the operations in World War II were truly about not knowing things and about um, the the unknowns in war, the fog of war, if you will. So let's see what we've got over here. So this is the first carrier battle in the world. The Japanese will attempt to invade Port Moresby. Since the capture of Rabal, this is the first move towards the isolation of Australia. A seaplane base will be built between 12 and 8 p.m. day one. Task Force R way cannot move until construction if achieved. Is achieved, probably. Uh, not under player's control, okay, that's fine. Open the path to the Coral Sea and head your TRS towards Port Mosby. Okay, that's fine, we're going to play for three days over here. Let's jump right into the map. Uh, and I'm going to get rid of the hexes here because that's just more beautiful to see. And it is kind of interesting to see. So we've got the Coral Sea over here, we've got Australia there, New, Caledo no, New Caledonia. Uh, with Nomaya at its tip, they are new, the new hero breeds, Solomon Islands and Solomon Sea. So let's start out by examining our forces. Now this up over here, Task Force 4, yeah, that's the Shogaku and the Suijakaku, uh, the two carriers that Japan had historically in the vicinity. We've got a couple of light cruisers here, we've got two transport task forces here, a light carrier, uh, the Shohuhu, I don't know how to pronounce that. And then we've got, oh yeah, look at that. So we have got um, the full Kidobutai. We've got all four fleet carriers. And that is kind of interesting because that is going to change the dynamics of this quite a bit. Historically, uh, these four were actually already planned for the midway operations. So it's kind of interesting to see all of them here. But it does also mean that it's going to be much, much more devastating if we lose anything because... If all of our carriers here are here, that really means to launch Midway and launch it uh, successfully, the Japanese would couldn't really afford to take any losses. I mean, that's true for the entire war, but specifically over here. So our task is to probably advance to Port Moresby. And um, if we do see that reflected in the victory conditions, yes, Port Moresby is worth 20 points. But on the other hand, losing ships is also uh, worth pretty, pretty much. So. Yeah, that's interesting to see. Heavy cruisers, light cruisers, all of that does give us points. Yeah, and port of co uh, control of Port Moresby as well. 
50% for sunk Japanese. We are okay. All fine. That's good. Right. Let's get to the game. So the game is played in turns. Each turn is one hour and twenty minutes, and each turn has four different phases. So every turn has twenty minute intervals, and you basically play through the day in that order. It's currently zero hours, so that does basically mean midnight, um, and that does also mean we cannot currently conduct any fly operations. Which, you know, as, as you would think, that, that does make some sense, I hope. Right, so, given our current setup, I'm a little bit skeptical of whether we should um, keep our carrier forces dispersed that much. Um, Japanese fleet operations in this time frame are often characterized by being extremely complicated and, and often unnecessarily complex. And I think the Battle of the Coral Sea is one of the prime examples for that. Um, because historically the task force, uh, or the carrier force, carrier group 3, I think, um, was coming down all the way via the Solomon Islands and, and sort of flanking around over here. And the Japanese were building uh, various different seaplanes in these various bases over here um, as they were coming, as they were doing that and exchanging planes among that. So it basically required the coordination of a lot of dis different task forces uh, and one of the historical difficulties was that the primary um, transport fleets were coming down uh, basically via this this uh, Yomanda, Yomanda, Yomad pass uh, down here uh, and coming down here, whereas the carriers were taking this long detour. Um, and that led to a very delicate dance uh, with the American carriers in this vicinity down here, uh, which really is, is hilarious if, if you do really read about it, just how how much they, they really stumbled on each other and so on. Right, that being said, um, every couple of turns or every couple of phases, we can move every single of our assets here. So we've got uh, the task force RY, which is down here into Largi. Uh, these guys we cannot control, but basically everyone else we should be able to control. We've got a seaplane base over here, and let's look at that. So that is the main screen over here. We've got an A6MN, so basically a fighter. Then we've got slightly older fighters, and then we have a couple of float planes. These guys are going to be super interesting, because they will be able to uh, conduct some search patterns. Uh, they can't really do that now because the timing is just way off. So, oh, no, I don't want to do that. Um, yeah, basically, you cannot really fly at midnight during these times. Um, but what I really would want to do is set up a search pattern here from this base. And we are going to ask. Okay, no launch till dawn. Yeah, I know that. Can I not ask you guys to launch yet? Well, we'll see. So, let's concentrate our forces a little bit. I'm going to ask these guys here to be on an autopilot and just basically come into the Solomon Sea. I think that should be the first order of the day. Um, and then the same thing is going to be true for you guys over here. So let me just order you over here. This is just uh, so that if I forget anyone uh, to to move them up, um, they'll just basically converge on that point, and I think that's fine. You guys, we're going to leave you where you are, and you can see already there are, uh, are a lot of weather effects, um, which is basically fine. Task Force 11, who are you? Okay, so we've got a, we've got some guys over here. You could potentially build a search plane base, right? We might want to try to get you down here. Where are you going? Are you actually going there? 43, 43 something? Yeah, you might be coming down here to, to build actually um, a hex there, and that should be okay, right? So uh, let's advance a couple of turns here, simply so that we get to the point where it's daylight and we can actually launch our operations. Uh, and basically next phase, if we advance to the next phase, you should see that everyone is moving up a little bit over here. Because basically everyone can move once every 1.2 hours. Right, you guys are all doing your thing. Honestly, I think we are going to be alright here. So let's actually pass a full hour here and see what is going to happen. So yeah, you guys are coming down here, that's fine. Basically at this point during the night phase, I don't think we need to be overly concerned. Uh, but let's see whether we can launch now. So yeah, at the base of Rakata. Okay, we can't launch yet. That's that's all right though. We can't even prep you yet. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Nothing so far. Great. And um, nevertheless, nevertheless, do something down here in Gosmata. So in the air base of Gosmata, there's nothing over here. We've got a couple of units in Rabaul and some in Lae. 
So La A is just across the uh, just across Port Moresby here. So I think what we're going to do actually here is take a couple of planes and try to take that base out as, as soon as possible. I know that there's no launch to dawn. Jesus. Okay, fine. Let's let's advance over here. Normally you can prep some things. And maybe I think that's that might be starting at 4, 4 a.m. So let's try to do that now. Yeah, okay. Now you can do it. Okay, so we are going to do a bombing mission here, basically. And uh, so the way that you do that is basically you pull um, these troops here, or these, these counters here, uh, which are currently in the hangar. So you can see we've got two squadrons of the A5M. We're going to pull one of them on the strike hex, uh, or on the strike field over there. And uh, we're going to get one G4M. And then you guys over here. You're carrying torpedoes, but air to sea factors. Okay, wait a minute. You guys, air to sea. I don't think you can actually strike ground things, can you? Okay, fair enough then. So what we're going to do is then we're going to try to take these guys here in the air to do a combat air patrol to basically protect the airfield. And we're going to send both fighters up there because I'm slightly concerned what these guys might do. Right, and then the other thing is we do want to start a search pattern from here from Lei, and we can take one of these units to do that. So let's take a G3M to do a search pattern. I think this, this pattern here is fine. So it's 120 degrees like so, and it's basically going to try to go very far, and that's all right. You can see it takes 80 minutes to prep that. That's basically uh, the time until the sun truly comes up. Uh, and that's fine because that's just basically reflecting that. Right, you guys are okay too and let's try to do some combat air patrol here on Rabaul too. I think we're going to send two planes up which should be alright uh, and then we're going to start some search patterns here with you too. Now that is okay so far let's go to the next hex thing over here and let's do some search patterns with you. Yeah now I can send you up and you're going to be ready um, at some point soon. Uh, the next thing I do want to do then is Put you guys on the runway and that does mean uh, you are going to be prepared to launch you're not going to launch yet but you can be launched at a very short time frame so that should be a-okay and i think quite fine um, and then again you guys do some searches over here that should basically give us some information as soon as day comes um, about these guys I don't think I need to be overly protective with um, these carriers here, at least not for now. I don't know exactly where the Americans are, but I suppose they must be still in the Solomon Sea at the, at the least. So I do not expect them uh, to be that impeded. Now, the Kenamaru, you guys can do search patterns. I don't believe we need to be quite as extensive over here, so let's do something like so. That should be okay, but we're going to send out two planes. That, I think, is going to be okay. Right. It's historical that the Japanese did not send out, really, search patterns from their carriers, and that has been criticized, and it is one of the um, critical effects, really, what they did, um, is to not send out planes from their carriers because it would immediately identify them. They very heavily, heavily relied on these flying boats and land-based bombers to spot things for the carriers um, if they didn't want to give away the um, presence of the carriers. That wasn't the case for Midway, but it certainly was the case in the Coral Sea. Right, um, you guys over here, where are you actually going? You should be going down here, shouldn't you? Right, um, let's first move you guys manually into cloud cover here because it's typically much better to do that, simply because it's much di more difficult to spot you there. Um, and then the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at these task forces over here. And what I do want to do is get at least one of you guys here um, on combat air patrol in either, you know what, let's do two guys over here, simply so that you can shoot down anything uh, that does come close to you. And we're going to send off the float planes here um, from the heavy cruisers uh, to do some searches in the vicinity. I'm going to keep one in reserve, but not much more than that. And that was, I think, on Task Force 10 and on 9. Yeah, on 9, uh, let's do the same thing. So that is we're going to send up some planes um, to do some combat air patrol. And that's fine-ish. Good. Let's see. Let's see what's going to develop over here. Um, like, you guys do have some combat air patrol, right? Yes, you do. Okay, that's fine. 
Do we want to try to attack down there at least? No. Let's, let's keep it as is for now. Okay, you guys can actually come down here because historically um, the Americans did do a raid on Tulagi, which actually gave away their position to the Japanese. Uh, and at least they knew the position of the carriers, although it was, I think, only Yorktown striking um, them and not Lexington. Although I might be mistaking uh, or confusing the two. Right. Yeah, I think we're just going to keep on going over here until it's 5.20. At that point, proper daylight breaks. And now our carrier operation, in fact, all of our flight operations, will start. So I think that is kind of interesting. And can I just briefly check you guys? Where can you go? Okay, you cannot go into these hexes here. Uh, which I'll consider cello or something, but that's going to be okay. Right, um, let's check down here because I really would not like you guys here to be spotted. And also we do need to take a look at the Shaho and get a couple of you guys ready and in the air. I think we're going to get two in the air. We're going to get one on the runway uh, with Combat Air Patrol 2. And then the heavy cruisers here, they can do searches um, and just get a couple of planes going for us. So that we really, really, really do need to spot the Americans if they are anywhere close, uh, which I don't know. Right, you guys can get into the proper cloud cover here. So raining does mean uh, you're much less likely to be spotted. So I think that's great. Great, and there you can see the search patterns are developing over here um, and are slowly coming out from the various places uh, where we have set them up. So that's that's nice. That's a good start. And uh, notice just how blind we are up in this direction. Uh, and you can also see that there are sometimes there are different colors to that. Um, I think yellow is always a seaplane, and the green and white ones are either fast searches or more thorough searches. Um, I'm slightly concerned because there's a lot of cloud cover down here, so that does mean we could very easily miss the Americans if they are in that region. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they are. Right, we've got Task Force 11 here. You guys don't necessarily need to well you could you can be lying down there that's not a bad idea you could also come down here you could come down here and create a, a base it's not the worst idea it would give us a very good indication of a very right range of ocean it would be very far from american bombers uh, which i'm or australian bombers uh, which i'm slightly concerned about i'm also concerned about the security of the base at lay I really want to do a strike, really, with you guys. You guys are fine. Okay, what we can do is send one of these planes here from Rabal uh, towards Lae to extend the combat air patrol there and be ready for that. Question is, do we want to take anyone else from Rabal in in any sort of strike fashion? I don't think we will. We'll just let's let's wait on good intel over here. Historically, the Japanese did at one point in the battle jump on faulty intelligence a little bit too soon um, and ended up attacking a tanker I believe for what they uh, expected would be a carrier. Right, you can see one of the Japanese strike forces is coming down here from Rabal and it's gonna go to Lael to provide the air cover there so that's nice but yeah is it really gonna be enough? Okay no one is over here that's interesting we could actually send up a plane over here you know what I think now in fact what we could do is change the airfield where you're gonna land we're gonna go here but then can we start of protection or we won't no do use a return do return over here that's fine okay so now you're gonna go over here you're gonna provide cover then then you're gonna return to that base fine okay I like it Good, let's see what else is going to develop over here. I'm going to just slowly advance face by face. And as you can see, our search patterns are now starting to go out very far. But still, we haven't really managed to to find any American, uh, which is kind of irritating. But on the other hand, you can see that the Americans have definitely spotted Task Force 6, which must be one of these down here, because it has seen some enemies, enemy planes overhead. And that is concerning because that means very likely there is going to be some sort of strike developing in this direction over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put more planes here into the air and then actually send out some planes to protect 
Task Force 6. We're going to send two planes that the... You know what? Let's send one to Task Force 6, and then we're going to send the other one... Sorry, not to you. To Task Force 7. Can I click that? Yes, there we go. Fine. And then the other three that we have got over here, they are just going to launch and try to find out what is going to happen over here. Because it is very likely that the Americans are going to strike at these task forces. Oh, and they're actually striking on La A itself, so that's interesting. We've got one B-25, I think a Mitchell, although I might be mistaking that with the Marauders. Uh, an SBD, so a dive bomber, and two fighters over here. We, on the other hand, have two fighters, the A-5M, not the famous Zero, but two other ones. So. The way that that works is there's always first the defensive fire, so AA fire and the combat air patrol. We didn't disrupt anyone or shoot down anyone, so the two bombers are now going to uh, attack us and they are actually destroying and damaging some things on the ground. So that's not great. On the other hand, the, a couple of the airplanes were damaged and you can see the US strike is getting to back to what I very much believe to be Port Morrisby. It happens. It just um, couldn't do much about that, I think. So, yeah, we are going to see. Right, no news of the American carriers, though. And uh, Let's briefly check over here. Okay, so Task Force 11 has also been spotted. Uh, and that's slightly a little bit more concerning because that is these guys over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask Task Force 9 over here, the Hiruyu, to provide some cover for you. We're going to send two fighters there um, and then we're going to launch two fighters well one from you maybe and one from you into the air here so that you have some cover of your own too. It's so far only land-based planes from the Americans that we have seen. You can see there are our fighters already so that's nice to see but yeah is it going to be enough? I don't know. Right, we also should make sure that we are under cloud cover if if and wherever we can. So let's take you guys over here and let's move you into the rain squall there. Uh, simply because you're going to get much better in defense, uh, much better defensive power there. You guys can likewise get under that cloud cover. Um, let's move you guys up over here. We've got these two carriers there. Oh, and there is something down here. So that is that is kind of interesting because that is likely to be some sort of American task force. We don't know much about it except that it's large, which does tell me it's probably carriers or something else that is very significant. Now the big issue is, well it's 9.40 so it is likely that we do have enough time to strike these guys. Our carriers are currently 16 hexes away here, our main carriers at least. Um, we don't really have the range. These guys do have a range of 20 hexes overall. So basically going 10 in, coming um, back, and typically it's better to have a little bit of safety. So we can't quite reach there yet. We could, um, of course, suicide our planes and just expect them not to come back, uh, but I really wouldn't want to do that. So what we can do is take the Soho over here and do a strike mission against this down here. This is almost certainly not going to be successful. It's very far away. It's a single plane, so it's a single squadron of planes, so four planes. But we just might be lucky. And, more crucially, it is going to give us um, some critical know-how here. We could change uh, the way that these units are attacked, but for one unit uh, in particular, it's a little bit meaningless. It will take you a little while to start all of these planes. But I think we're going to be all right here. So, yeah, yeah, there's just no chance how we would attack them for now. But what we can do is move up closer towards them and just try to get a strike off um, at some point. So, yeah, we might also get updated intelligence and we can see they are also moving in our direction. So that is interesting. We're down to 15 hexes. We don't need to necessarily launch a 10 because there is going to be some relative movement uh, of these carriers as the planes go to target and come back but for now I think it's all right but what we should start soon is uh, a launch here from the light carriers and I'm going to move them out of this cloud cover here just for a moment there we go because that does put you a little bit closer 
uh, which I think we very much appreciate. Uh, but let's try to sneak back into cloud cover here at least. Yeah, that's that's okay. Right, you guys are going to move up automatically. These guys do need to come down here too. But just very gradually. Intelligence gain, yeah, Task Force 11. Task Force 11 is still being spotted here. Um, you guys do have some, some protection there, but I'm not sure that is going to be enough uh, to really dissuade any attack. It's just two fighters. That's not a lot, really. I do expect some Americans to show up at any point. Uh, but we're also very close to actually striking these guys down here. So that is nice to see. Oh, and there's another large group down here. So that can mean two things. Either they have split up their two carriers, or they actually have more than two carriers here. We are going to find out in a second, because we are going to launch here um, at these guys, or attack these guys very soon. Okay, you guys are landing up there, um, which is if, which is fine, uh, but I would really like to take you guys and move you up into this hex there. That's fine. It is 12 o'clock, so it's starting to get a little bit late to do another strike here. It is 14 hexes away, isn't it? Well, let's first see what they really are, and then we can decide what we're going to do with that. Okay, so it's two carriers over here. It's two carriers in a single group uh, with an air cover of eight F4Fs. That's, that's already a deviation from the historical setup, because historically uh, both... American carriers, the Yorktown and Lexington, did operate quite independently. Right. I don't know which ones exactly these are. No names given. Um, and we are very likely to be shot down here by either AA or Combat Air Patrol. I mean, eight squadrons. These are these are a lot of planes uh, against our single squadron that is coming in here. So, actually, you did manage to get through. I don't think you're going to be able to do anything very effective over here. But it's certainly nice to see that you did. So there we go, you did uh, try to attack this carrier here. I doubt whether you did much uh, damage to them. On the other hand, you were damaged in return. Nevertheless, this was strictly a recon mission, so I'm going to be happy with that result. I think that is very fine indeed. Right, that being said, we really want, want to strike at you, and we're still out at 12 hexes. Now, what we can do, though, is we can go ahead and take these carriers over here, and actually at least prep ourselves, right? So we have this ability where we can move some things on the deck and runway. Now we can't move everything because at some point uh, there's gonna be basically a traffic jam on our flight deck. So we wanna avoid that, but let's take at least three of our dive bombers and let's say three of our torpedo bombers and then three of our fighters maybe in an escort configuration, no. You can see that would cause some traffic jam here so uh, and take 200 minutes, so we are not going to do that. Uh, we're going to take one of these carriers away and that um, brings it down to 20. So basically that is still occupying quite a bit of the airspace on the flight deck, but I suppose it's okay. Right, uh, I suppose it's also going to be similar over here, so let's do... Oh, let's do three torpedo bombers, so another two, there we go. Three dive bombers, there we go. And let's, let's do three fighters here. Uh, and we're going to move one back, probably. Yes, 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 we are. So that's fine. There we go. One of these fighters is going to be moved back. That does mean a couple of you guys are on the hangar. You might need 40 minutes here because that is a little bit too much uh, for you. But you know what? That's fine. But uh, let's also launch another search pattern over here because I think that is going to be appropriate um, for this time of the day. 12.20 you just might find something that will result in us uh, doing another launch. We don't know, but it might be the case. So that's Task Force 10. Uh, let's do the same for Task Force 9 with the Hiruju over here. So I think by now we kind of know the numbers and I basically do prefer torpedo planes a little bit. But what we certainly want to do is coordinate these things, right? Uh, so we want to make sure that we've got some of both and we do want to use some escort fighters too so yeah i think that is going to be quite appropriate let's say one escort fighter here i do want to keep a little bit more for you guys then we're going to f use four dive bombers and i think two torpedo bombers let's say three right that's fine no traffic jams here or just some very minimal ones so yeah that is okay 
So we are going to prepare the strike here. That does make us quite vulnerable, but still I think it's going to be okay. Right, and we know that that is two carriers. You are steaming due west for now. Interesting. You guys are fine over here. You guys definitely do need to come down as fast as possible. I mean, you can't make it through here, can you? Ah, that's, that's a shame. Okay, you know what? In that case, um, let's actually get this task force here. And you are going to make it down here after all. So let's do try to get this way. And that should be okay-ish. Right. What's your issue? You don't have enough endurance to warrant a safe return. Um, so how far away are you actually from our uh, our ships here? We might need to move in a little bit closer and sometimes I just do need to turn that on Ah, because there is some some blockage here Right, okay fine Task Force 11 you guys are doing okay there. There's no cloud cover where I could put you that's in your in your way There's another task force here Which for now we think does not contain carriers so we don't still we still don't know how many carriers they truly have in this area. Could be two, could be four. It's not going to be five. Um, I think at this point in the time, there's Enterprise and Hornet, Yorktown and Lexington, uh, but Saratoga must have been, I think, in repairs due to some earlier damage. Um, although I can't quite remember that. Okay, so you guys are steaming west. Question is, where are we going to go then? Do you want to try to weave through here, uh, or do we want to come down here? This might be misinterpreted intel, but I think we're going to try to get into this direction here. But I have to say our window here is closing. Because we don't know when they can attack, but here's a warning and that's not nice. Okay, so they are attacking Laie Le again, uh, which certainly is nice. There's only one damage bomber here. We've got someone sitting over here, which I suppose is okay. And we've got a full area here, a full complement of things in Rabal. And we could actually think about striking here in Rabal onto the carriers. I'm not sure you do have the range for that though. Range is 50. Yeah, but you can see basically that you guys would land at 11 pm, and that is just in the night. So if we turn to base, now there's a 20% of 20% damage. 20% chance of taking damage at night but honestly I think we just might risk that because this would be a huge payoff if we were able to get that so let's actually think about this I think you guys could not could not provide good air cover or just not at the range that we are talking about here yeah so 67% of the guys some of our guys are pretty sure to not come back unless they are strongly moving into our direction, which at this point we don't think so. You reach your target just before night time, so if they're going to turn away, that would be an issue. But honestly, honestly, I think we're going to do that. It's it's a very risky strike. It's almost suicidal, at least for the fighters there. But I think we can take these sort of risks. That's that's taking some pilots, but if we can at least damage one of their, their carriers, that would be well worth it. So yeah, let's try to do that. Um, also, we are being spotted over Task Force 8 by, um, by some type of carrier. So that is concerning, because that does mean you guys here do need to put up more in the air. You are having some, some air cover here, so that's nice. But that probably means at this moment the Americans are starting to launch a strike here at Task Force 8. I dislike that idea. I dislike that idea a lot. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to pull away from you guys while you're doing that. What's, what's up with you guys? Why are you not returning? 1440? Start, land. Oh, because we moved away and now these guys do have some issue there. But I think they're going to be alright after all. Okay, they are attacking Lei. Ah, we've just landed one of our fighters here. That's unfortunate. They are sending a lot here. Two Mitchells. 
At least the dive bomber here has been destroyed. Uh, but at least the, the Mitchells at least are going to get through and they're probably going to cause some damage. But uh, so far only on the runway. So I think that's that's okay so far for us. But yeah, I really want to get um, a strike here in on these, these fighters. Okay, there comes our strike from Rabal towards these guys. But our carriers still are lacking a little bit in terms of range. So it's a range of 11. Which means if these guys are going to move here, we are going to be out of range. We could try to do that. We could still try to do a strike here. Um, let's just check on, on how likely we think that is. Range of 22. You would reach the target during daylight still. We would need, basically need to move two hexes towards you. I think we can do that. I think we can. So what we're going to do then is we are going to launch a strike here on the first day. Because I think it's just so critical that we do that. Right. Let's put all of these guys here into the strike box. That's a couple of fighters still. Let's ask you guys here to do a strike on them. Not everyone is going to return safely to base. But we are going to reach target and we are going to reach home before nightfall. And I think we have enough time to actually reach them. So let's go ahead and do that. You're going to take zero minutes here because we have been prepared. But I would like to use at least one fighter here. No, that is going to delay you by too long. So let's go down to zero here and that's fine. And then basically everyone else here is going to be ready. Okay, let's allocate top priority to that so that nothing else is impeding that. Um, and we can launch some more fighters to provide air cover for us afterwards. We still have this strike coming in. Uh, you guys are probably going to arrive later, uh, but I think that's okay. Right. Oh, uh, we should probably try to strike with you guys too. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Let's do that. Sorry, completely missed that. Good. Everyone, everyone over here. We actually do have a lot more fighters too. Okay, everyone over here. You're also going to strike the carriers. You're going to land, that's fine. You don't have the endurance, that's fine. Uh, we're going to try to move you in closer. Um, but one thing that we need to do is we need to change the auto-targeting here. More light. Compact. Okay, I do want to go contra, contra, uh, compact again here. Uh, but let's dial this down here to 60% because I would like to not only attack the bombers, uh, sorry, the, the carriers, but also at least a couple of other formations. Right, there's our first strike coming in. Hopefully they're actually going to find the guys. They might actually not find them at all, uh, which would be slightly awkward. Okay, you're also going to move closer, which should be helpful uh, in retrieving our our guys. What, have, what are we getting here? That's just random... Random noise, not too important at all. Uh, let's move Task Force 8 a little bit out. That's going to be okay. Um, and you guys have actually managed to launch all of your strike groups here that we did want to launch at least. Right, so let's try to get enough planes here into, sorry, into the airbox simply so that we can make sure that we are protecting our carriers as strongly as possible. Right, it's, it's 20 minutes to 4 p.m. So... Not sure we're going to see much more. Okay, enemy seaplane detected in hacks. In which hacks? Into Loggy. No, that's ours. That's ours. That's not anyone else's. Okay, fine. So we've got now a sea base into Loggy, don't we? I thought we would. Okay, apparently it's not on the map yet, but it is there. Right, let's move you guys closer into the rain squad there. You guys also move closer, simply so that we maybe have a chance of getting these guys here. Now we would be in range, but uh, we, we couldn't just launch now because that would mean, ooh. Okay, you guys have not really, you've lost them. That's a bit of an issue. Right, let's take you into the rain squad there and a little bit further away from them. 
Because I still think there might be an American strike that is going for us. But yeah, you guys are... You've missed them. You have missed them. We've lost them, I think. No, no, there we go. There it is. Converging on you guys now. Some of them are returning. They basically ditched their stuff and they are coming now back because um, they just couldn't find anyone. But still we have a strike coming in. Unfortunately, it's going to be a strike without fighters. Uh, simply because our fighters had to return. Sounds a little bit ridiculous, but that is what happened at the Coral Sea uh, to, to some hilarious attempts even. Okay, uh, interestingly enough, the Americans are starting with an attack here with an A-29 on us. Now, we don't have enough to really counter them, uh, except for AA, which is not working out. There they come. They are attacking the Horiku Maru, but without any effect. So, good, uh, good luck on our side there. And now we are going to attack here... Um, as the next party. Uh, let's do move our carriers here a little bit closer. I oh, can't move into there. Ooh, that's that's an issue. All right, let's try to get you over here at least, and then you guys also need to circle around there. Right, let's see. Let's see what we have got over here. So, two carriers on their side, six planes in combat air formation, but 12 squadrons from our side attacking. But without any combat, uh, without any escort fighters on our side, that is really, really a big issue here. We are going to lose planes. We are going to have two destroyed, three are boarding, but seven are coming through. And I'm hoping that these seven are going to do some damage here against these carriers. You're going to concentrate on a single carrier here, but you did, you did, you did cause some damage. I'm not sure how much yet, but some damage was done. So, and another plane lost here. I'm not sure how good that is, but one torpedo hit, two bomb hits, they are listing due to flooding. That means they also cannot launch or recover airplanes. So that's good. It's not fantastic. But I think there might be another strike coming in. This one is escorted, so that's good. It would have been good if this one had come in first. But this is from the other carrier. So that's nice. Here we go. AA. Um, then we are going to have the fighters here, which are going to come in. But we have three zeros here, so at least... Okay, yeah, we are getting someone damaged, uh, someone destroyed. You are getting someone damaged there. But we have a lot of planes here coming in and attacking a lot of carriers and one of these heavy cruisers. Now, here was a mistake. I should have concentrated more on the carriers, but at least we did something. Right, um, let's see what is going to be the case over here. And that is great, because we have sunk, or at least we think that we have sunk one of their carriers. That is a great result. We've lost another of our B-5s. Uh, and two of our V5s are damaged, so lots of casualties here to our air groups. But with two torpedoes and three bombs, one of the American carriers does go down, uh, and one of their heavy cruisers is actually also hit by a torpedo and a bomb. Nice. We've got a third strike on the way, but this one is going to take a little bit longer to, to arrive here. So for now, that's okay. Um, anything else that we might want to do there? Now, it is getting pretty late, so we don't actually need to be too concerned about things, I think, at this point. What I would want to do then is uh, move you guys into cover of this squall, though. And likewise, you guys... Okay, we do need to wait one phase over here until you guys can get into that hacks too. That's going to be all right. Task Force 11, uh, you guys are okay. Let's try to get you down here. And then we've got the last attack here from our side, probably at least for the day. So that's nice to see. And let's see what we're going to do here. So one escort fighter on our side. Three bombers. So, sorry, five bombs basically. But they are all land-based. Interesting to see. They must have split off some of their some of their ships over here. I think they probably split off one of the, heavy, or the damaged heavy cruiser. And it's trying to limp back with some cover. Um, but that's good for us, because that does mean there's going to be less AA, which is driving away one of our planes, but that's okay, because the rest here is still going to attack the carrier, and it is causing some damage, so I'm, I'm extremely happy about that. That's a great result. We did gamble a lot here, but at least... Oh, it's going down. I mean, another G3M destroyed, but another American carrier is here. Three, three torpedoes, and it's destroyed. That's great. That's a great result. That is that is already far better than what's had has happened historically. So that is 
very, very great. Now, the next issue is, though, some of our planes are not going to make it back this night. So, big issue there. You guys are going to come back to Rabal. Can we actually retarget you to some other place? Are you going to have an easier time to go, let's say... No, sorry. To go, let's say, over here. So, that is 16 hexes. And that is more than that. So, you know what, guys? Um, can I change your stuff here? Um, and I'm going to rebase you to just Martar. Can I do that? I can. You're still going to land that night, and there's going to be a huge chance that you're going to crash. But it's still going to be quite nice. Right, so we've got these guys down here. Question is, what have we got actually in terms of surface surface engagement stuff? We've got a lot of battleships. The Congo? That's a battle cruiser, really, isn't it? I think we have more over here, right? So I'm gonna detach at least the Kirishima, Kirishima and the Hijai with two destroyers. And you guys are going to form a surface task force, which is always going to try to seek surface engagements. And then you're going to come here. So you're going to try to come down here during the night um, and get them into some sort of night action, which of course the Japanese were quite good at um, historically. So yeah, I think that's nice. That being said, this episode has gone on for a very long time here and we are starting to see the nighttime phase. So, I say thank you very much for watching. Do let me know what you think of the game so far. Uh, I really like the idea of uh, controlling these sea bases for now. Um, and I really do like the idea of building one down here. But that is going to have to wait until next time. So, thank you very much for watching. Do let me know your thoughts. And I hope to see you around then. Bye-bye.